What do you think? Whoa, very nice. It's very cool, Bateman, but that's nothing. What do you think? Nice. But wait, you ain't seen nothing yet. Quite. Impressive. Very nice. Mm. Let's see Paul Allen's. Oh my god. Hello everybody, I'm Redouble. Welcome back to another Age of the Ring cast. We're back on Athelion. We keep getting this map for our 3v3 casts. I feel bad for Lebanon. It's my favorite one. And uh, we always get this one. But uh, if memory serves correctly, they've actually all been uh, rather decent. So, let's hope that trend continues. In the top left, we have... Okay, it's Durin. That trend is not going to continue. But he cannot make Ents. He has Woodland Realm. He could make... Um... You know what? Beyonding battering rams. That's all you can make. Go for it, man. <laughs> His teammate is Edibor, and it is the mighty Banix, who's very good as Erebor, but don't let him, uh, don't tell him I said that. And Captain Olaf is Udomac on crack, and uh, he is playing the mighty Misty Mountains, and does he have the upgrade already, or am I crazy? No. Does it always look like... Maybe I'm crazy. Sorry. I don't play Misty much, but I should know that. Sorry, it, it didn't make any sense that he would have got it that fast, but for some reason I thought maybe he had Untamed Allegiance. I don't know, I'm crazy. Opposite them! Uh-oh, Dolgaldor, okay. Oh, it's Pudi! We have Pudi, and he's already upgrading his Fount of Corruption. Well then, this should be very interesting. He should be making Thrain, and uh, Durin should be making Faraday, which he's already done. Partnering Pudi is Corvus, who wants their Corvus E8. Oh my god, me! And he's Lorien, unfortunately. And we have a Gondor as Adivasi, who I still... I mean, we've seen him a couple times, but I still don't know anything about this kid, so... I don't know if he's good or bad, but he's playing Gondor, so... If he's bad, then uh, helpful for him, because Gondor's one of the easiest factions to play. And he's doing a little creeping. Every time I play this map, I can never be bothered to creep this lair. I mean, I can never be bothered to creep in general, I'd probably just make a tower there or something. But I usually like to go forward and get this lair and try and get some presence on the map. So I just tend to ignore those ones. Anyway, we've got Faraday. Is Durin going to go for the double cap? Oh my god, that could be really good. And Udamax going for Screechers. Let's, uh, let's hope he knows what he's doing with those. Uh, is the ability back? It's almost back. And I'm sure as soon as it is, he's going to cap that. Uh, Thrain is possible. Uh, Thrain is capable, but there is no Thrain. I think all of his money went into the Blighted Trappers. I can see where he's going with this because obviously they counter the Cave Trolls, and um, I mean they're pretty decent at everything. But like they specialize in killing trolls. So if Udamag decides to go in, alright, we got the Bjorn. Wow, Durin's actually trying to win. He's not just half-assing it. He's gone for Ferreted double cap. And the Woodmen, who are just amazing at basically everything. Lots of Clansmen of Lamadon, though, to meet him. He's even popping the horn and microing that. Okay, you didn't need to. You didn't need to put horn there. You didn't need to pop horn there, man. <laughs> He's gonna get the farm no matter what, and you vastly outnumber him. That was a waste of a tier one. Sounds like a minor thing, but if Erebor decides to go in now or something, and you don't have a horn, then that could be a bit of a big deal. All right, let's see what Bannix is doing. Forward barracks, yeah, kind of a good idea because this map's so big. And a lot of mines, so maybe more of an eco start. And he's up against Lorien. I like the idea of Erebor archers against Lorien. I think that's a good idea. Then that heavy armor and their bonus to archers, uh, it's a good idea. All right, defensive line. Both, wow, that that's insane. His eco is going to be through the roof. Through the cotton picking roof. I don't even think he needs to go B eco. It's not even a priority while he's got these outposts. Oh! Yeah, that doesn't work. Because Elven Cloak is only when they're standing still. Yeah, Elven Cloak. It's not a permanent stealth. It's when they're standing still. So if you like... Yeah, no. It's literally impossible. Because if you're capping it. And then you do Elven Cloak. It'll it'll stop the cap. And then if you stand next to it. Elven Cloak. And then go to... Then go to cap, it'll cancel the Elven Cloak. So, no matter no matter which way you do it, <laughs> the Elven Cloak uh, gets cancelled. So, yeah, that's... 
I would like it to do that, but no, you can't. All right, here we go. Lauren's going in. There is no tunnel collapse there. It's a relatively new mine. They haven't renovated yet. And the archers go in. And finally, no fucking menstock. Ayo, hey, let's go. There's Arca. Tried and true Arca. Already max level. And he'll probably do XP soon. Hmm. I think I would have done Cav Summon there, and I would actually push here, because you've got Commander's Horn as well. I think you could go in here. There goes the stun. I would do Cav now. You'd probably do it in a second. You're going to hear the horn. Wait, where the hell's my horn? Give me my horn. Oh, he went Oaken Shield. That's why there was no horn. Lame. Well, at least he gets Ram Riders. And, oh my god, PTSD intensified. But you know what's good about Summon Cav? You go into the Pikes Panics. You don't care. And they end. Look at that damage. Okay, he's actually... I mean, I, I guess that's a decent job since the Guardians are actually already in there. So yeah, I guess he can go for the end there. Is it weird that on like a narrow field like this, Erebor has such a good advantage over, over Lorien? Because Guardians beat these Pikes hands down and Lorien Archers, I think, lose to Erebor Archers, funnily enough. So yeah, I think this is looking really well for Bannix. He didn't even need to trample the uh, archers. He had his uh, his mighty guardians there. The ant will probably go down soon. And let's see what's going on top. Lots of lots of um, huntsmen and mighty Chattagast. and a Greenwood barracks coming in. He'll need some vineyards, but Radagast with the stun, with the damage over time, and uh, he gives XP, right? Yeah, XP. Or he uh, boosts XP. That's cool for Woodman. Alright, Untamed Allegiance goes in. He can now make the Stone Trolls. He gets some nice money from that. And there was some fighting down here. And it looks like Pudi was actually able to hold because he... His level 3 barracks, that was a... Shit he got that fast. Level 3 barracks already. So Ravagers with one Tomb Guard on the way. I like how you popped Carnage there. Like, you know what? It's not enough, it's not enough to destroy the enemy. We must humiliate them. Alright, here we go. Using that trample. Very nice, Pudi. Very nice. Level 4. You know how those stupid, like, bussin' for real, for real, no cap memes that I pretend to understand? This face looks like it's begging for that treatment. Like, if you just imagine, like, the curly hair on that, and then he's got, like, the drip shirt, and then, like, a chain. There needs, like, there needs to be a mock portrait of that. That would be fucking hilarious. As I said, I don't pretend to understand what all that means, but... It still makes me laugh, strangely enough. Alright, Radagast. He's got... Yeah, here we go. Use this one. It does damage over time. Use the flock of birds, you nub. Here goes Pinneth Gellan. You know what? Pinneth Gellan. If someone's gonna, like, go hardcore into the woods, which sounds kind of dirty, but... I mean, Pinneth Gellan might not be a bad answer. I mean, the trample damage isn't that good, but... I feel like it's a good counter to someone who's just gonna like spam all these. Anyway, Commander's Horn did go out here. They got the Mark of Boomer as well. There is Farmer on the field. Fucking layman, man! Ooh, Captain Othelian in the back though. Well done. He does have the stun. Is he gonna do it? He is. Very nice touch. I actually got the hero, which is kind of cool. So lots of battles going on here. Fire arrows! For the love of... Bannix, what? I mean, people talk about Rude Devil influence. Fucking Bannock influence. I'm pretty sure he pioneered, or maybe it was Cammy. I pretty, uh, it seems like panics, but like, fire arrows on Goblin Archers just for the lols. Now everyone does it, and I'm pretty sure they do it unironically. And I don't know why. It, they, their damage is shit. It's bad, but you know what? Maybe that's the point. Maybe I'm missing the point. Maybe that is the point. So it's very much a uh, quality fighting quantity here. Pudi better get ready though, because uh, they're coming his way. And level 5. Gee, I wonder how he got level 5. Could it be the bird? Of course it is. Um, Maybe some battle wagons? Or maybe early siege? Oh, and some speed? Okay, nice. You know, if you went the other way, you would have got Gloin. Yeah. Okay, here we go. He's got Kamul on the field. Oh, and they hit the poison arrows! Udamac, you fucking try hard. Damn it all. Look at the poison arrows. Look at the damage there. Fell wind, knocks them back, they can't attack. 
You got Moose Garsh in the back as well. Oh man, this has got to be infuriating. Top tier units losing to fire arrows. But the Kamul Trample cannot be stopped. As I say that, the Trample stops. But at least he gets the Screech and... Okay, he needs to get some kills here. He needs to get some kills on the board right now. There you go. <laughs> Just wiped out. Goblin Town. Oh, I'm not going to do it. We're not going to go there. We will not descend into that. Okay, he needs to make sure he keeps his Ravages alive. Because they are leveled up and you don't want to lose them. Greenwoods now. With the Balan buff. And Arca. That's a lot of speed. Yeah, I mean, this is just terrifying. Look, they're all leveled up, man. They're all leveled up. Oh, that's terrifying. Okay, the elves have probably seen them because, uh, teammate vision. The goats have gone in ahead of the host. Faramir on his horse. That's always a good sign. Not. I like it when people do that, though, because it is kind of cool to see him. But, yeah, he's not... You know, he's way better in his ranger mode. If this affected all Cav, which... Obviously, it would be pointless because then there'd be no point getting Imrahil, but... It'd be cool if it affected all Cav. Alright, come all capping back the outpost. And lots of fights for the outpost, it seems. And Lumbermills. Eco is very strong with the left side of the map. Very strong. The left is meant to have bad eco. What is this? Get it? But what the hell? Uh, yeah, I, I think he... Okay, I think he can go and send some troops in to get that, because the outpost is important for him. Harbingers of Shadow would be a good idea. A Castellan as well, but it's expensive and you do need level 3. It is worth a punt, but I think Harbingers are probably priority. Just because they're good against heroes and they're... I feel like they're just... Tankier than uh, Ravages, but I could be wrong about that. Alright, so double Ents now, double Barracks for uh, Corvus. Uh, any Galathrim? Yes, he does. I'm surprised why they didn't attack. Maybe he... F yeah, actually, I don't know why he didn't attack there. <laughs> this force could go in and do some serious damage. Maybe he didn't want to get, like, sniped by a bunch of Galathrim, but, like... What's the point in leveling up if you're not going to... Press the advantage, you know? Unless he's waiting for heavy armor. Hold on, let's see what Banicus is thinking. He does have the arrow upgrade, but he doesn't this have the armor upgrade. Meeting, ah, he loves Stonehelm for uh, Stonehelm. He loves Oaken Shield for some reason. Like, I don't know, I like Thorin too, but like, he like reveres him, but ain't nothing wrong with that, I suppose. Alright, the elves are going in. Galathrium. With their heavy armor. And actually, very few pikes in there. These Ents could be doing some trampling if they really wanted to. Anyway, there goes the knockback. Temporarily knockback enemy units. They're moving because I think they were focusing on uh, the thingy, the Ents. The Inspire Fear doesn't affect level 5 units, but did affect everything else. There goes the Arrow Volley. And Bannix actually not, it's not going entirely all his way there. Balin's a bit clumped, needs to watch out. And the Ram Riders, an ever-present nuisance. Stonehelm slowly leveling up. What's his leadership? 25% armor, fear resist, and XP. Well, his fear resist must have a small range, or he just wasn't there because the backline were actually uh, routing there. But it didn't look like, I feel, I feel when that arrow volley came in, that it wouldn't. It didn't look like it was going all of his way, but I was wrong, because they're getting back up. They got level fives. Um, I think, yeah, maybe the Ents should have gone for the trample there, because there was like one pike in there. If he if he focuses the pikes with his archers, then he can just trample all of these guys with his Ents and get power points for days. There goes a buff from Dura. Nice. Nice teamwork. Now the Athelian Rangers come in. Captain Athelian is back, because of course it is. He's got like a three second cooldown. And is he gonna go for the building? It doesn't look like it, but he has made a catapult, as you would have heard. And, ooh, Pathfinding has lost him two level 5 Guardians. That's gotta sting a bit, but at least... At least everything else made it out, and they're all level 5 as well, which is hilarious. So if the Elves clump up like they did in that last fight, I guarantee he's gonna use the, uh, the... The smaller rock ammo. 
Anyway, what the fuck is going on here? I see nothing but Doggle Door units. Kabul level four. <laughs> Urshak only level one running for the hills. Is he going to try and get Muzgash here? And just the tried and true, uh, wow, he's, I don't think Kamul is very good at killing heroes, but, uh, damage is damage is damage, I suppose. There goes the Felbat. And I think he could have kept going there, Pudi. Maybe he didn't want to push his luck, but I think he could have got that tunnel. I don't think he would have got the hero, but yeah, definitely could have got the tunnel. Anyway, Greenwoods, with the Gilded Guard, that's what, I was wondering why he made Honorian Pikes, but that would be the reason. That was for Gilded Guard, who are actually going to go down here. <gasps> We saw the death of Gilded Guard? What the fuck? Oh my god, Durin must be going ape shit right now. Like, oh my god. And if you've ever heard him laugh, the, the ape shit is uh, appropriate. But damn! The Dillion Range is doing the business there. Okay, Catapult is taking down one barracks. Thorin, level two. He's almost got his debuff. Nullifies enemy leadership, hell yes. Ah, the Great Horn of Erebor. She'll sound in the deep one last time. Let's fucking go. And I'm not sure how that end caught fire. Oh, it's on the catapult. Derp. Oh, and good guy Pudi. Look at him. Literally sniping a catapult. That one's on you, Udamak. You should have been keeping him busy. And wait, what the f What the hell? Hey, yo, you okay, man? <laughs> so, the Nazgul, they have poisonous breath, which, like, basically makes everyone sick. That's, that's, that's the black breath right now. That's what it does to a dwarf. Running got summon from Lauren. Boom. Um. So you know how when they level up, they get more health. Even the level five Erebor units died from that wizard blast. Holy shit! <laughs> Is there actually a reason to pick any other tier two for Lauren? Seriously, it's just way too good. Okay. Rodside team are firmly on the defensive. But they're not actually taking, or maybe, maybe Lauren's getting a bloody nose, but Doggledore's not taking that many losses. No, Arca! So I think they keep defending for a little bit longer, consolidate their forces, and then they counterattack. I think they need a counterattack. Or maybe they're going to do that now. Maybe Pudi wants blood. Gilded Guard are already back. Elven King's patience goes in. And there's the debuff from Thorin, I'm pretty sure. They got stuck on one tomb guard? Oh, Durin, what's going on? What's going on with your gilded guard? They're gonna die a second time. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. Holy shit, okay, the boulder's got him so many power points there. Double gilded guard lost from Durin. Maybe you should have just gone battering rounds. Maybe maybe that's maybe maybe you're better when you meme, I don't know, but that's the unkillable gilded guard have died twice, okay. People are going to think they're actually not OP. And that Elven King's Patience, I actually think, was... Yeah, that was that was bad. The Elven King's Patience really fucked up uh, Pud there. Like, he couldn't do anything. He couldn't move. He had to stand and fight while being sniped by all this stuff. Elven King's Patience comboed with the boulders was actually really good. Alright, uh, Lorien's... Or Corvus is building a flat for his teammate for some reason. Headhunter went on on a Kamul. But let's face it, you slow down Kamul, he's still faster than anything in this game. Ooh, Durin's Day, okay. And fully armed and filthy, alright. Wait, Gondor's counterattacking. Gondor with the trebuchet was used defensively. And what has Durin got? He's pinging a bunch of stuff there, okay. We saw Durin lose Gilded God twice and a bunch of other troops to the Athelians. Did his Farron die? I don't know if his Farron died. He does have some Greenwoods, but... Athelion's buffed by uh, a level 7... A level 7 uh, Farron is going to be difficult. Durin's Day comes in. I think that's for the stun. Oh, and Bannock's to the rescue. There goes the flaming munitions. No, no, this way. Go up. Go up. Go up. Block his escape and the rams as well. Bloody hell, the catapult and the cavalry summon. C and C, baby. It's not just Command and Conquer. It, it's also a great tactic. Look at that. And that, yeah, that's definitely Thorn's debuff. Okay. Gilded Guard for round three. I'd laugh if it just bugged out. Okay, Farm is dead. Oh, man. The last time we saw Bannix, he was putting out fires everywhere as uh, with Kingsguard. 
And now he's doing it with Erebor. Fully armed and filthy Erebor. You gotta love it. And Nandor here, Hathol, getting damage where they can. There goes the stun. Very nice. This catapult, though, is terrifying. You're gonna need, like... You're going to need Cav to take it out, so... Arnorian Knights... Or... Like, you can't expect Kamul to do all the work. That Catapult, yeah, I think that's... I think that's the HVT. I think that's a high-value target. Because, like, with any sort of stun or slow, this thing just melts infantry. Plus, it doesn't seem a very pike-heavy. Like, what have we got? We got one pike in there, maybe two? We got one there, and I think there's like another there. Maybe there's like three pikes in there, actually. Two or three, but I don't know. I think you could get away with Cav. We will keep the forests of Gondor safe. Good luck with that, Athelian Rangers. <laughs> Athelian's already fallen. What are you talking about? You'll keep the forests of Gondor safe. Alright, Radagast Summon is back for the next big cheeky clump. So, uh, Corvus has something up his sleeve, but... His eco is looking a little worse for wear, and his command points aren't exactly that good either. If someone's low on money, but they got high CP, it means they spent all their money on their army, so it's fine. And Gondor's actually not looking good as well. Look at that, just just a juggernaut. Oh no, but the Radagast! Okay, they do have the 50% armor from Rallying Call. They should be fine. They should be fine. No fucking way! What the hell?! Like, he dies after it, but... Yavanna! Fuck me. Okay, a lot of them got back up, but a lot of them got fucking blasted, I swear to god. Accepting my fate as Radagast be like... Hold on. We got an attack here. We got Stitches! Which, which zone in WoW was Stitches in? Is it Duskwood? I never really... I don't play a line, so I, I don't level up Eastern Kingdoms. I think it's Duskwood. But Stitches gets the bitches. And he actually got tagged by Lug. Lomau. I'm gonna guess it's on autocast there, Udamac. Oh, that's another thing these boys are good at. They're good against siege. Or, uh, building damage. Alright, uh... Greenwood's moving up the top. No, keep going, keep going, keep going! You gotta kill these fucking dwarves, man. You gotta bleed them. Bleed them like a stuffed pig. Come on, you had so many bodkins there. I think you could have actually just held with the skeleton crew and attacked. Alright, he's going in deep. Oh no, here's the worm summon! Ravagers are flammable! Or inflammable, they mean the same thing. Thank you, English. Why did trappers... Even without the armor, that worm's tanking it much better than I thought, actually. And I think this thing should explode because it will reach its timer suit. There it is! I'm, I'm gonna say he killed Lug with that. I'm, I'm gonna say Abomination killed Lug there. And I think that was Urshak? <laughs> what the fuck was that? That was brilliant. That was definitely one take for the Urshak voice actor. That was that was beautiful. Now fall back at Yeeted. XD, there it is, our first of the game. I'm pretty sure at least the first one we've caught. And Revargers are going in. Not enough, he needs the reinforcements. And the Felbats at 750 on pop, he's still sticking with it. Oh, okay, he made that from a worm lair, because that's the, uh... That's the, uh... Summon. And Kamul now level 7, dealing damage passively around him. One more level, he'll summon the Ancient Eastlings. Elven King's Patience goes in, another XD, we caught it. Trebuchet. Who could probably be hitting the fortress from that range? And Gilded Guard, wary not to get tra not wary not to die again. Cease their charge. And let's just the Bodkin's really doing well. He needs some more buffs here. Maybe a forward heroic statue will do it well. He needs to guarantee he doesn't get fucked. Legolas is getting some nice sniping value already level four. The dwarves are on their way, which means Corvus should should attack, but I feel like they don't have much. Yeah, they really don't have much. Okay. The Lamroth's coming in. Oh, double catapult! And there's Durin's day for the stun again. I told you he was good with Erebor. It's beautiful to see. Okay, maybe Cav can save the day. They have gone for uh, Dolamroth. It's whether he has enough money to make all that. 
But yeah, do, do, I, I was... I said Cav might do well, so let's see. Uh, okay, powers time. Why? That's literally a waste. Corvus, why? I don't care how dire the battle was. Never get summoned Sylvan. Unless you really like the eagle summon, I guess. Um... Yeah, Keely, okay. Even the smallest person can change the course of the future. I don't think you're gonna change anything, Galadriel. I think this level's beyond... Or, I think... Yeah, I'm not sure that was the right play, Corvus. It looks like you've got zero units. Yeah, you've got 24 command points. I think while Pud was attacking, we must have missed another... Another demolition from, uh... Banex. He must be close to tier 4. Wait, which one was this? Is this the one that reduces leadership? It is. Very nice. And then he does have tier 4. Okay. Because if we missed him killing another elven army, then yeah, I was thinking he must have must have hit tier 4. The worm is a good choice because no matter how much armor you have, it'll melt through. It, m it melts through slower if you've got heavy armor, but it will still melt through and do some serious damage. There goes the fell wind. Beautiful. And Great Goblin. Great Goblin's a strange choice, but hey. If you have Untamed Allegiance, might as well. Urshak as well. I like that more people are making him. He does have his cave in, but that's not going to help him. There's no buildings around. Blighted Trap is focusing Urshak, but now they swap their attention to the level 4 worm. With the armor upgrade. Look at these things. It was just bouncing off. Look, they should be, I mean, maybe someone will say that's good damage, but I feel like it should have been more. Oh, the dwarves are moving in. And all those Ravagers of Tomb Guard were just melted by that worm. That's why it's level 5, so uh, investment returned there. Okay, Radagast. Did the stun into the Wizard Blast, but the dwarves are still getting back up. And there's uh, Lord Dane. I've always found him the more reasonable of the two. And now we have the Goblin Cleaver, Orc Christ. And it seems a lot of his frontline. Oh no, they're still here. Okay. And Dwalin should be getting a nice buff because he's near Thorin, his bro. When does Thorin get his uh, royal. Oh, well, Galadriel's fucking dead. Oh! A Thorin might be dead here. It depends. Is he going to go for the catapult? I would say so. Go for the catapults. Oh my god. Look at those level 5 archers with the mithril tip though. Yikes. They are strong. He did get the catapult. But yikes. He lost one cavalry in the meantime. And he should probably retreat now. Uh, When does Thorin get his royal... Like... Royal garments. Regalia. Do you have to get the, the Arkenstone? Or is it when he levels up? Speaking of leveling up, it's eh, time. And lots of Greenwood. Not backed up by any heroes that I can see. Ah, oh, but backed up by Gilded Guard. Very nice touch. See, he waited for the pikes to properly engage. We have an earthquake! There it is! And that's a lot of fucking damage. And now they can just surround the fortress. But yeah, that was a really nice trample by the Go to Guard there, Durin. Well done. Delayed their charge long enough for the pikes to engage and uh, leave the uh, archers. There's a summon coming in here. Cloud break. Good luck. Everything's feared resist here. And look at all these beautiful level 5s. The Might of Arca. Beautiful dwarven gameplay here. Fortress down without even using Orchrist. And I think that's GG. The Worm. Stopping some... Uh, Stopping some Dogal Door reinforcements and melting those Harbingers. Very smart, actually. Because what, like, a, a key strength of Dogal Door is that they have very tanky units. But if you use fire damage like he's using with the worms, it just it just nullifies that. So, you know, good thinking by Udamac. Alright, he's so close to the Black Easterlings. Oh, sorry, the Ancient Easterlings, I should say. And let's see if Pudi's going to give us what the people want. I'll give the people what they want. Yes! Feely, help. Feely, help. Fucking guys. Oh, no. And look how tanky these boys are. They're fighting heroes. 
Kamal's dead, but the ancient Easterlings live on. And I think the uh, Dolamroth Knights are a bit too little too late, unfortunately. And look at the cave baths, Udamak! <laughs> oh shit, well done. Udamak played so well. To be honest, I think everyone's played well. There hasn't been like one player that's uh, like, I don't think anyone's really like not pulled their weight. But I think Udamak's playing pr like particularly well. The salted Udamak is particularly good. And that worm went from here to here. Anyway, that's Lauren basically dead. Um, they had good units, but once you have like level five dwarves and they've got some leadership behind them, I think he needed more time to get like upgraded Galathrim. I think that would have done it. Because pound for pound, Galathrim beat upgraded dwarves. It's just he needed more and he didn't have the time to uh, get that. And uh, as you could see, Panics had a a great time murdering all those elves. Because look how many look how many points he's got. Speaking of a great time, the uh, abominations there. And we might see the return of the king as one final a one final act of defiance from the Adivasi here. Wait, is he actually going to get bulk? Because he's hooked them, which I think lowers their armor. Lol. And you pissed off fucking Dwalin with that. And there he goes. You know what would be really cool? No, not Faramidine. We see that all the time. If Dorgaldor wanted to do, like... Or if Age of the Ring wanted to do, like, a Lich King sort of hero, where he could actually raise undead. Like, if Stitches dies and you could just raise him, that'd be fucking cool. Anyway, the Gondor Fortress has gone down. I think that was... I know the worm was hitting it, but I think that was more of a fort delete because it did have the uh, stonework. But now, that just leaves Pudi and a level 1 necromancer. Corvus has built another fortress, but yeah, I don't think they can uh, stop the power that's risen in the west here. Oh, you're flexing now. You've got the cold drake. That is a cold drake, right? I'm not fucking retarded. There it is. Okay. Fun fact about the cold drake. I think, and I haven't read the appendices for like 10 years... But when Thor set up Erebor, or who, no, when Thorin the first set up Erebor, or whoever it was who set up Erebor, I think he had a brother, or maybe it was Thor's brother. Someone had a brother. And you could tell I haven't read the appendices in a while. <laughs> but someone had a brother, and they went to the Grey Mountains to establish a dwarven kingdom. And their king got fucking eaten by a Drake, so... Let's just say this is the same cold drake, and there's like a dwarf skeleton in there. There you go. That's that was my very vague recollection of the appendices. You're welcome. You know what? Fucking brilliant. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. I think I I I love if if you can you even get a copy of the Lord of the Rings that doesn't have the appendices in it? Because I don't see why you wouldn't if that was the case. Like the appendices, it just gives you like the entire timeline. It gives you the history of like the dwarves and who cares about elves really. So, yeah, it tells you lots of cool stuff. Alright, this game's pretty much basically done. MVP is probably Udamak. I know Panic's played so well. But Udamak was doing everything he did without an Arca. Arca's basically a cheat code. <laughs> Pay to level him up, and then there you go. Um, but yeah, I think Udamak was MVP. He did so well. I mean, Panic's was everywhere. Maybe I should give it to Panic. I don't know, they both played admirably. admirably. I don't know. I just feel like it's, for, for me, it's harder to play as Misty Mountains than Erebor. So there you go. But shout out to Panix for not making any, uh, uh, man units. Which we're kind of sick to death of. Okay, when's this game gonna end? Come on, we're at the end here. Let's see what powers they've got cooking up. Unimac using the worms. Is the corruption on? Ooh, and Snare is here. He might actually ensnare some worms. I'm, I've am i had it with these motherfucking worms on my motherfucking doorstep. And there it is. It didn't look like much damage at first, but there it goes. And Legolas in the back basically sealed the deal as well. Yeah, there it is. Ah, there's the ensnare! They're gonna get a hero kill! Balin? 
Oh, Balin gets away. Okay, he didn't get any of the archers, unfortunately. Ah, uh, he's <laughs> ramming his own units. Okay. Well, there you go, then. Almost tier 4. Maybe... I think that's what Udemac wants. He's close to getting that tier 4. The Glathrum might give it to him. Three more points to go. And the Worm. The Worm goes into uh, the Balrog, right? He's gone the left side path, which I much prefer with Misty Mountains. Uh, I think Scavenger's really good. And I feel like the Worm is just so much better than the Watcher. That's why I go left side. And, uh... <laughs> Lug has returned. Very distinct, Lug. They did well with him. One more point. Are we gonna see tier 4? We're very close. The barracks might give him 25. Is he gonna be denied this? Don't deny me this. Wait, what the hell was that? No! Oh, there's an XD. No, the cold drake and the worm have gone down. Someone give this man a vow. Also, tier four would be nice. There it is, 25. Durin's Bane. Durin's Bane. There it is. Someone on top of Bannock's army. Bannock's army. Bannock's army. Yes, he did it. <laughs> I fucking called it. Oh, beautiful. Fire breath. <laughs> Fire breath. Fire Breath doesn't care about friend or foe. It just burns. Durin's very pissed off. Ah, oh, beautiful end here. Now, is he gonna kill Durin's army? I think that's a more tempting target than Panics, actually. No, it looks like he's not. Okay. I don't, actually, I don't know what this Balrog's doing. <laughs> And there it is. Well done. That was an epic game. Thank you very much for that. And I uh, hope you guys all enjoyed as well. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. See you next time. Peace out. And goodbye.